Hey, welcome to the Real Life Keto Show. We are the Keto Sisters, and we are literally giddy. We are so excited to be doing our very first radio show. For the last four, four and a half years, we have been passionately sharing with people the keto lifestyle, what that looks like, ha helping people really transform their lives. And it's all kind of built to this moment to being able to share it with you. So we're so excited to be here. I'm Bridget. And I'm Rebecca. And we know nothing about hosting a radio show, but we know a lot about changing people's lives with the keto lifestyle. So we hope you will join us every week. And we're going to show you the tips and the tricks and the strategies that we've used in our lives. And we've helped thousands of women use in their lives to actually make dramatic change to actually live the life that they wanted to live so like if you've ever maybe kept multiple sizes of clothes mm -hmm. in your closet because you need to keep those fat clothes for your fat days this radio show is for you yeah if you have ever been frustrated because you feel like your entire life is yo-yo dieting and you just feel like there's no end in sight and every year in spite of your all your attempts to diet you're gaining four or five pounds every year this show is for you. Or are you that person that doesn't really get good sleep at night and you wonder, how can I get through my day when I'm exhausted, but yet I can't get good sleep at night? Yeah, so we're talking to so many of you out there who have been, we have been where you are. We know what it's like to be frustrated. We're going to share a little bit about our stories today because you're probably thinking like, who are these girls? <laughs> So a little bit about us. Um, about four years ago, I reached a really low point with my health. I, um, I had lived my entire life, I am not even kidding, like filling myself with junk food. I went decades without a fruit or a vegetable. Um, I mean, my food was pretty much fast food, fried food frozen food, junk food. Those are not the real food groups, <laughs> by the way. I mean, but that's literally what I lived on. And I just, I didn't know any better. I mean, that's how I was raised. And I can remember being in the grocery and I'm not even kidding. I would look at people that were over in the produce section and I'd kind of make fun of them. Like, what are those weirdos doing eating fruits and vegetables when there's like all these aisles of chips and candy and cookies? Like there's, what is wrong with them? And that's literally where my mind was until I hit 40. And I'm not even kidding. It was like within days of hitting 40, it was like I hit a brick wall. All of a sudden, I had no energy. I had lots of inflammation in my body. I could barely get up in the mornings. I was just chronically not feeling good. I mean, I was really miserable. And what was sad is I started going to different doctors. And I knew that something was wrong with me. And they tried to just say like, well, you're getting older, you know, you might be depressed. And I kept trying to tell the doctors like, I love my life. I was, I'm a mom of four at the time I was teaching and coaching. I had a busy full life that I really enjoyed, but I wasn't able to live my life because I felt so bad every day. So every day I had this struggle of, can I even get out of the bed? Do I even want to get through the day? If this is what it feels like when I'm 40, what in the world am I going to feel like when I'm 50? And do I even want to see that? So I finally, after going to doctors and trying to figure out what was wrong with me, I had a friend. I have, I have a lot of friends. <laughs> She's very social. <laughs> I do. I do love people. Um, it wasn't Rebecca, but I had another friend that said, Hey Bridge, do you think there's any chance that the way that you eat is the reason that you feel so bad? And I am not even kidding. I can just remember where we were standing and it's like a light bulb went off. I was like, well, first I was like, no, I don't think there's a connection because <laughs> I really couldn't even process it. But she just kept saying like, I think there's something to this. I think that's where you need to start. So I started just, I started kind of on this quest to figure out, is there some connection? Is there something that I can do to fuel myself better that's going to actually make me feel better, to give me back the life that's been kind of taken from me because of what I'm putting in my mouth and what it is doing to my body. So fortunately, I have another awesome friend named Rebecca who had been sharing with me some of the changes that she had been going through. And I reached out to her and she helped me get started on this. Yeah. And so maybe you're listening to this and you're not as extreme as Bridget. Maybe you have actually eaten a vegetable or two in the last few years. Maybe you've even gone a step further. Maybe you've been really pro proactive in your health and you've been working out and you've been trying to find the right answer as far as your diet. 
maybe you've gone lower fat because you've read that that's healthier for you. Um, maybe you've tried some of the other different diet styles that are out there, but you're consciously trying different things and nothing is working. And so maybe you are getting frustrated because you think something's wrong with you. If none of these other programs or um, health strategies are working, you could be like me. I am a fitness instructor and I hit my mid forties and I was still teaching a lot of classes, being very active, having my healthy smoothie with kale and spinach and fresh um, fruits in it, but I still wasn't feeling great. I was still tired. I was actually dreaming, like daydreaming of taking a nap. Like that was the big highlight of my day. If I could figure out how to get a nap that would help me get through my afternoon and my evening. Um, and I was getting thick around the middle, which as an exercise instructor made me feel really self-conscious because here I am in front of the class trying to explain, hey, exercise this way. But I didn't feel like I was a very motivating instructor when I didn't look as healthy as I thought I should. And that really kind of messes with your mind. I mean, and any of you ladies out there listening, you've probably had a lot of those same conversations in your mind about your weight and associating your weight or your size with your self-worth. Yeah. So that's the thing, you know, Rebecca will share a little bit more about her story, but we just have such a passion for women because we have been where you are. We have been where we've just been frustrated with our bodies and like, Hey, if this is how it feels to age, like I, I don't really want any part of this. And the problem is like, we're all aging. Right. And we just, we're so frustrated that we started thinking like, what can we do to help ourselves with this? Um, and it just started this whole quest that we have been on to figure it out. And now to help other people be able to figure it out. Yeah. Because we've talked to so many women and tell me if you relate to any of these things, right? Have you ever sat on a couch and pulled a child or a pillow in front of you to hide like your midsection? Have you ever refused to buy a new bathing suit and so you don't actually go with your kids to the water park or the pool or the lake mm -hmm. because you're embarrassed of how you appear? Do you not go to your high school or your college reunion because of your appearance? Um, do you refuse social engagements or invitations because, oh, that involves a lot of walking. I don't have the energy for that. Or no, I'm not, I'm not up for a, a pickup game of volleyball in the, the sand volleyball court. I just don't have the energy. I don't have the flexibility. Mm -hmm. You know, if you feel like you're a prisoner of your body instead of your body empowering you to live the life that you want and need to live, this radio show is for you. Yeah, and what's really cool, so we have had all those feelings and we had been to that point of frustration. And what's fun about us doing this radio show together is we have very different personalities. And what Rebecca, when she first started, she did all kinds of research and still does a lot of research about the keto lifestyle. She knows, I mean, she's like super smart. She knows so many things about the science and she loves to just dig into the research. I mean, she spent months researching it before before she even jumped in. I, on the other hand, was like, eh, I'll give it a try. If it works, I'll do it, you know? So <laughs> totally different. And we know that there's so many different personalities listening to this, watching this, that um, wherever you are, we're gonna be able to resonate with you because we have been where you are. We have been to that point of frustration, but we can show you, the reason we call it Real Life Keto is because some people approach it with more of a scientific mind. Some people approach it with like more of a free spirit. You know, I am a really busy mom. So the way that I do my keto lifestyle is very kind of free. Like I'm, I'm not real focused on my macros. I have found ways to keep my body in ketosis that take not a whole lot of thought and not a lot of preparation because I just don't have that. That's not the way that my life looks. So when we were thinking about what to name it and what we really stood for, we wanted to go with real life keto because wherever you are in your real life, we have a place for you here and we're going to help teach you all the different ways that you can keto. If you have any familiarity with keto, you might have like a certain thing in your mind, like, oh, you have to count your macros. You have to prick your finger and test your ketone levels. And that can be a part of it, but that is not what keto looks like for us. So we're going to show you all the different options and ways that you can be fueled by ketones and ketosis and feel awesome without it affecting your lifestyle. Um, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you're like, girl, what in the heck is a ketone? What is ketosis? 
that's where we were four and five years ago when we started on all of this. So we're going to break it into small, like bite-sized pieces for you so that you can see the beauty of the keto lifestyle and find what might fit for you so that you don't have to feel discouraged with your body and your clothes and the aging process. But I, I mean, I'm telling you, I feel better now. I'm almost 45. I feel better now than I did when I was 20. And that is no exaggeration. When I look back at how I looked when I was 20, how I felt when I was 20, I am so thankful for what I have discovered. And people tell me often, like, I feel like you're aging backward. You're looking younger all the time. There's only one reason why. It's because of the keto lifestyle. So I cannot wait to share more about it with you. Yes. And so like Bridget said, wherever you are on the journey, maybe you just happened to cross this. You don't know a keto from a key that you put in the wall. I mean, <laughs> it's not a key like a, in the door and a toe like on your foot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, regardless of where you are, this show can be for you. If you know something about keto, maybe you've been involved in um, some social media groups about keto, and some of those can be very strict and very unforgiving. And if that was sort of a turnoff for you, don't worry. We are not strict. We are all, like Bridget said, about finding the balance that's right for you in the lifestyle that you want to lead. So if you want to be able to go to a family cookout and you want to be able to go to the movies or you want to be able to go to a restaurant, we want those things for you and we will teach you strategies to keep you on track with your health goals, but still be able to live a life that you actually enjoy. Yes, yeah, so we're so excited to get started with you. I am I cannot tell you how pumped we have been for this day to do our first radio show. Um, so stay tuned. We have lots of content for you, so many things that we can't wait to share with you so that you can create your best life like we have. All right, welcome back. We're so glad you're still with us because we have a lot we still want to share. One of the things we want to really get across in this first episode is just kind of explaining what the keto lifestyle is. Because honestly, until we got introduced to it, we had no clue. Yeah, I'd never even heard the word ketosis or ketones. I had, I think the first couple months I spelled it K E Y T O N E. <laughs> I mean, just, it's not, it's not a common term. Although, when we started four and five years ago, really, it was almost a, a concept that people had barely heard of, where now I think you pretty much have probably at least seen this on some kind of bars at the grocery, you know, some kind of granola bar type things. You probably have seen coming across your Facebook, people's before and afters. You know, this, is, this lifestyle has helped so many people to lose 50, 100, over 100 pounds. So you are seeing probably a lot of before and afters of people who are using the keto lifestyle to um, have radical changes. Yeah. And like Bridget said, a lot of people nowadays are aware of keto and, and they're often attracted to it because of the fat loss component. But it's really so much more, and we'll cover that in later episodes, a lot of the other mental benefits, sleep benefits, um, inflammation benefits of a keto lifestyle. Like there are so many benefits that go so much further than fat loss or weight loss. But like we really enjoy helping people that want to lose weight. And like we have a family that's lost over 300 pounds together as a family. And to see that sort of transformation, you know, it's not just the woman or the mom who's doing it, but it, it's something that a whole family can do and can sustain. It doesn't have to be like a fad diet that people do, um, you know, for a short amount of time. We're encouraging it as a lifestyle. Yeah. So that family that she's talking about, I mean, they, they're self-proclaimed like, Two years ago, they were like the total couch potato family. Just, you know, so many times I think people, it's so hard just to get up, get to work, get through your day, and then you get home and you're like, oh, I'm so tired. I'm going to hit the drive through on the way home. And then you get home and you're like, oh, I'm exhausted. I deserve to just sit and binge out on Netflix for a couple hours. And that is a thing that is becoming more and more common in our society, especially now with the way that things are in the world. And so for this family, that was kind of the lifestyle that they were living, all just getting through their day, um, you know, coming home, getting fast food or whatever on the way home, and then being couch potatoes, just sitting and watching TV. And now to watch that family that's lost over 300 pounds that just did a, um, a, 5K. a, a 5K together, um, one of those color runs, so super fun. And just to see like the, the way that they glow now compared to wh where they felt before is so powerful. So we're here to help you. You know, maybe you have different goals. For me, honestly, when I started, 
weight loss was something that I was like, yeah, that would be great. But I felt so bad that I could not even think about the weight loss. All I could think about was how am I going to get through this day? Where am I going to get the energy to muster up getting through the workday and then to come home and be a mom all night and run kids around? Where is that energy going to come from? So for me, the weight loss has honestly just been a bonus. Um, I am so thankful for the energy. That is my favorite benefit of the keto lifestyle. Yeah. And maybe you've been on quarantine for the last several months and your life has looked very different. Maybe it's very stressful financially, or maybe you're trying to be a full-time employee and homeschool your kids, you know, Mm -hmm. if they haven't gone back to school and you've got all these, you know, worries and stresses and just the uncertainty. And that can cause us to gain weight as well as being that close to your pantry all the time Mm -hmm. where you can just run and get snacks. So a lot of people who've struggled over the last several weeks, several months, they might need some help just getting back on track. Maybe this, you know, the whole quarantine situation kind of knocked them off balance. It's an unprecedented time. And so we want to come alongside you as well and help you kind of get back on track and get back to your goals and get back to your movement and eating correctly. And, you know, explaining what that could even look like if you're not, if you're not sure what to eat. Yes. Yeah, so probably you're here. You, you might be hearing us saying all this and you're thinking like, okay, girls, like you're talking all around how great you feel, the results that people can get. What in the world is keto? So we're going to, I mean, that's what the show is going to be all about is explaining all different things about keto. Um, but for starters, we need to kind of explain what it is about the keto diet, what makes something keto um, and how is it different from other diets? So the first thing that you need to know about the keto diet is that it's very low carb. Um, and so I think we're probably at the point now um, that most people watching this probably know like carbs are not your friend. Sugar, I say this all the time, sugar is the devil. <laughs> And that seems like an exaggeration at first, but when you start doing the research, you will see that sugar does lead to inflammation and inflammation causes a lot of autoimmune diseases, just different um, chronic illnesses. So sugar is a kind of a a thing that you don't want to have in your life, right? Um, So I'm sure you're familiar with low carb diets and what that looks like. So the thing about keto is it's very low carb. Yeah. And the other thing that's really unique about keto is that it has an emphasis on including a high percentage of your calories coming from healthy fats. And most of us, myself included, were taught that fat makes you fat. You know, we were told to go low fat, skim milk, no fat. And if you look at our society as a whole, as we've done that as a society, have we gotten smaller? Have we gotten healthier? No, I mean, just the opposite. And so it can be a really hard thing to wrap your head around to think about eating fat, fueling your body with fat. But there are several great things about fat. First of all, it tends to taste really good. gives a lot of really good flavor. Second of all, it's very satisfying, meaning that it keeps you full longer. And like Bridget's a busy mom, I have a full schedule. It's great to not have your life consumed by when you can eat Mm -hmm. and what you can eat. Um, A lot of times I might just eat one meal a day um, or I might eat a meal and a couple of snacks. And that's so much easier to fit in my busy lifestyle than eating three full meals a day and multiple snacks throughout the day. Yeah, it's interesting. So here as we're recording this, um, it is late afternoon. It's almost dinner time. And right before we got on here, I was like, oh, I just got to Rebecca's house and literally just did not think about eating. And that is something that I never would have said before doing the keto, before doing the keto lifestyle, before I was so consumed by eating all the time from the time that I woke up until really I went to bed because when you're fueled by carbs, you are just wanting, you eat carbs and a few hours later you burn through them and then you want more carbs. But now that I'm being fueled by healthy fats, I just, food is kind of a little bit of an afterthought, which allows you to start to eat to live instead of living to eat. And that little shift makes all the difference Um, because then I can fill my time with other things. My mind is full of other things besides what am I going to eat next? I mean, can anyone relate to this? I seriously, before, like years ago, when I would be eating a meal, as I'm putting that last bite in my mouth, I'm thinking one of two things, either, man, I wish I could start over and eat that again because that was so good. (laughs) Or what am I going to eat next? Like that was a constant cycle in my mind. 
taking up a lot of my mental space and making me feel bad because a couple hours after I ate, then a few hours later, I wanted to eat again. And what I was eating was really straight carbs and junk food. Where now that I'm being fueled by fat, which I know it sounds so weird at first, but now that I'm being fueled by fat, I oftentimes forget to eat and I get places and I'm like, oh, what am I going to eat? It, I just, it's not, it's not first of mind like it used to be. I really wish at this point that this was not a radio show because I would love to see your faces as you hear this. Because if somebody told me four years ago, I would forget to eat, mm -hmm. I probably would have smacked them in the face. <laughs> Like, no, you do not know my life because mm -hmm. I was the girl that always took snacks like with me because I knew I would get hungry and I would be to a place where I didn't have food and I would just get so irritable and so grumpy and you get lethargic and mean. And so I would have to have snacks all the time. And that's really hard, you know, to, to live your life when you're always thinking about, I got to stop to eat. I got a plan to eat. Yeah, I'm thinking back to, so, you know, we've been doing this together for over four years, and I remember one of the first keto conferences that I went to with Rebecca, <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I'm going to say here, um, and when she, when I was asking her, like, what is the schedule for the day, you know, and, and people, uh, there were probably 1,500 people maybe in the audience, and um, I was like, all right, what's the schedule? She's like, well, we'll probably have, like, um, a meal break at about four, and I was like, okay, but what's happening like from nine till four? She's like, well, we can just bring like nuts and jerky to snack on and then we'll have one meal break. And I was like, what are you talking? Are you crazy woman? <laughs> um, but what's funny now is I just last week got together with some people in our keto community and they were there until six o'clock at night and no one ate anything except for a few cashews because everyone there was fueled by fat. And so fat just keeps you full longer, makes you feel great and just ends that crazy carb cycle. Yeah. But if you're out there listening to this and you don't believe us, just stay tuned. Just trust us. Mm -hmm. Come back next week and listen because I wouldn't have believed it either. And it's been so transformational and so freeing for my life to not be consumed by food and mm -hmm. have every thought be about food. I know when my extended family gets together, you know, there'll be like 20 something of us and it's a lot. It's like feeding a small army. So it's a lot of preparation to get it. Everyone fed by the time we've cleaned it up, someone's already preparing mm -hmm. the next meal. Mm -hmm. It's exhausting. Yeah. So just have hope that there is a different way. If you are currently watching this and you're consumed by food that was exactly us before. And we know now that there is a different way and it all hinges on fueling your body with fat. Um, and crazy as it sounds, we're going to unpack this for you um, every week and explain, you know, sometimes we'll get into the science of the diet and what Yay. it really means, <laughs> what's really happening in your diet um, in your body when you're doing the keto diet. Um, we'll talk some about the history and the discoveries that have been found through this crazy phenomenon of eating fat to burn fat and to give you the best possible energy source for your body, to give your body the best possible fuel that it can get. Um, so we're so excited to be on here, to be sharing this with you. Yeah, and just when she mentioned the science, like we talked about before, I am really into the science. I love it. I've learned a lot over the past four and a half years, but we do want you to know we are not medical professionals. We are not like causing you any kind of treatment or for disease or condition or anything like that. We're just providing our personal experience, what has been transformational for us and those that we've helped lead. Um, but you should always work with your medical provider. Yes. So if you would like more information, go to reallifeketo.com and um, we can help get you more information. Yeah. That's it for now. Go create your best life. And you're just too much. Ooh. Oh, I forgot what that meant. <laughs> that was so good. I was just like going to throw in some, have you? you right. Know, close it. Okay. I was just giving you a gentle little I forgot our signal that like, I made up. <laughs> okay. As we learn more about the keto lifestyle ourselves. Um, lifestyle. Dang it. It was better last time. <laughs> okay.